this bitch going to pop up at? Right here. So, let's just pop this motherfucker open. Stand by. Bank. Bonk. Here we go. Tier list. So, this is the tier list that I posted on YouTube. Okay? Now, again, I can't say enough about prefacing just where this tier list sits at. Now, I do want to cover something about this tier list, and I'm going to make some changes to this tier list. My God. Stand by. Good Lord. Thanks. Fuck stick. Okay, so as we can see, you know, OP with ease of use, A plus is just very good and easy to use. So basically, extremely good frames. Now, I'm going to actually remove a frame from this particular tier. Okay? I'm actually going to take Hildren. I'm going to put her down in a B tier. The reason being is because my build, okay, let's go to my build, okay? Sorry, I had to tab into the window. My build is a subsuming build, and truth be told, my build for Hildren is so much better with a subsume than it is just her running pillage and her normal shit. Where the fuck did I put? There she is. The crowned bitch herself. Thermal Sunder over her fourth because, our, you know, Aegis Storm is just absolutely useless unless you're just energy feeding a squad. But this is Hildren, okay? She's the pillage bitch. The problem is, is that she doesn't use pillage as good as other frames. You know, at 304% ability strength, coupled with corrosive projection, you're 88% armor reduction with one pulse of pillage. So you're always going to cast two until Molt Augmented catches up. The problem is, is that you will never get a pure armor strip out of Hildren unless you're running like five Tau Forge shards, which is 60% on top of 60% from Molt Augmented. That's about the only fucking way that you're going to do it. Now, is it doable? Yeah, sure. Of course it is. But guess what? I'm already running five regular ability strength, so you're only going to get 25% more ability strength, right? So 25% more ability strength plus 60, it's 85, plus 304. You're still going to come up short, just barely you're going to come up short. You're going to come up at 389% ability strength if you run five Tau Forge shards. You need 400 to get a pure armor strip out of Hildren. That is insane. That is something that they should have buffed when they did Hildren Prime. Far better. I mean, yeah, they buffed her shields, sure. <sighs> you know, they buffed her sprint speed, cool. But really? Like, in the grand scheme of it, without adding some other ability in there, you know, Haven is okay. Haven is okay. But it's not great, okay? It's really not a great ability. Bale Fire Surge. Now, this is something interesting. If this wasn't pure electricity, this would be so much better. But considering it's pure electricity and especially running like a tank efficiency build like this, it's really just not a viable weapon to use. But it is. it, it can do some damage. But not a lot. Not, not on the steel pass side of things. Like, it's just going to wing motherfucking trash mobs. That's about it. So, really, she has pillage. So, what else do you do but apply something else like Thermal Sunder? You know, personally, I like that because you can heat proc everything around you and damage their armor or their shields. Or you cold proc them, then heat proc them. Kind of do whatever you want to. But it gives her a lot of versatility to do a lot of output damage, especially you cold proc them. You just headshot everything around you and have just have a great time doing it. Okay. So that's why I will put Hildren in the perspective of a B tier. Okay. So there's that. tab over to this now now another frame i actually want to switch frames because the more i think about it one of my prime perspectives on why exactly i said dramatic improvement with subsume is that the frame the kit is fine without or as it is but if you put a subsume on it that's fine hydroid Hydroid is truthfully, in my opinion, for what he does. Don't get mad at me, okay? But with a subsume on him, 
you can double dip nourish coupled with his corrosive output abilities and turn any weapon into just a sheer uh, any weapon within reason i will say to really make him just a death dealing machine of insanity okay now another frame and and i had some people contact me about this i'm going to take two frames and actually move them up okay i really am because the more I thought about it, as much as I want to say, like, hey, this is actually legit, okay? But hey, why would you possibly put Mesa and Zaku in very powerful but needs setup? And although I described it being mental setup, which Mirage is definitely one of those, I'm not going to move Mirage. Mirage is one of those, it takes a while to get used to playing her. Like, really, really well playing her. Mesa, not so much. Mesa, once you get used to getting your ass murdered, it's a little bit of a different story. So, Mesa truthfully does deserve to be up here. Zaku. The more I thought about it, his entire kit works. If you put Condemn over his first ability, it makes him just unbelievably good. And then, like, I can't, in my play style, move some of these other frames, okay? Now, I, now can could I make other sections? Yes. Like, specifically separate D tier into, like, a C plus tier and then a C tier? Sure, I could. Absolutely, I could. Um, you know, like, uh... I forget how to make another row. Add a row above. Here we go. Sure. Um, and we'll go with a slightly darker. Cool. I really did that. Why did I just do that? I said this. Thank you. Cool. Okay. And then... D tier should be more like, uh, let's see here. Who is messaging me? Why is someone messaging me right now? Hi. Let's go with that color. And then in Pablo, we trust. God help us. Green. Why not? It's a good time. But see, what this does is this takes us into usable but needs work, and then C plus niche. Because this does change up the equation a little bit, because, like, see, I need to move this motherfucker up. Because niche playstyle, hold on, let me just see who the hell is messaging me. Ah, it's Papa Joe. What's up, bro? I don't know if you're watching or not. I am streaming if you want to come and watch. Right? So... Basically, so if we add this whole extra row here, right? Just add this whole extra fucking row. What we end up getting is something kind of interesting. I really need to fix this because, like, now we can't see this fucking row. Good enough, right? Good enough. So, dramatic improvement was subsumed. Pretty obvious. Very powerful, but requires setup. Now, I'm going to move one from there up into S tier, and... It's not because I got crap, but it's because I thought about it, okay? From a power output standpoint, there is one frame in the A, very powerful, but needs setup. Again, it goes into the middle, but she's she's too low. She's way too low. For what she can do, she's entirely too low. Saren, without question. Now, niche play style frames, okay? There is no question about this. Volt is definitely one of those. Volt is absolutely a niche play style frame. Um, Nidus, absolutely a niche playstyle frame. Nyx, absolutely a niche playstyle frame. 
and it's it's because people kind of got it twisted as far as um if you know like i was bagging on a frame because it wasn't good being that low in the list and that's not the case like i don't want that to be all twisted and fucked up like that but like there's some frames in here that just fit it fine like i, th I again I, just like i said in the video that i shot you know last week or whenever it was i guess a couple weeks ago now um like you know i love lavos i think lavos is a great frame i just don't think he's a high tier frame right um i think you know Loki, although people are calling for a rework of his kit, I'm somewhat like Volts because their synergies don't quite mix with the setups. And I understand that thought. Yo, hey, it actually read it out, I think, maybe. Let's see. It, it's reading out for me. Tell me if it's reading dots for you, Joe, please. Because I'm getting so tired of that stupid filter doing that bullshit. <sighs> no idea it's dumb um but and then there's like i don't know there's some that are in here that are just like eh. but then there's some that fit right <laughs> now another one i am gonna move up absolutely another one i'm gonna move up and it was because i hadn't dicked around with the wolf build yet varuna Varuna with her base kit is fucking unbelievably powerful. Like, oh my god, she is unbelievably powerful. She's fun. But you can also do a complete setup with a spy build like I did, and it's just really stupid. Um, let's see, is there any other changes that we think we need to make here? Obviously, we added the whole new category. Um, let me look here. So I am gonna take Evara and stick her down into the niche category because like i said she's such a paced frame right like she's just such an absolutely weirdly paced frame i think gara okay because of the amount of ability casting and sanity that gara does i do believe that she is an extremely powerful frame but i also wholeheartedly believe that she is very niche like, I don't think that, you know, people, there's a ton of people building that god -tier level of crazy to make her just this armor slash destructo frame. And then, eh, you know. Now, again, does C plus mean that a frame is bad? Absolutely not. Just a very niche playstyle or a very niche usage. You know. So I think this is probably a more accurate representation of, of where we're at with the tier list than before, you know, so a couple more S tier frames, because honestly, you don't need to do a goddamn thing to them aside from just build them and have fun with them. And I really think that I just kind of cut hydroids nuts off by doing the disservice of putting him all the way down in dramatic improvement with subsume because honestly his grouping ability is really good plus it applies corrosive procs which plays right into his passive anyway but you know then again i did saren a kind of disservice too because she's a really powerful frame albeit not my play style she's an extremely powerful frame so i don't know <laughs> that's just that's just kind of where i'm at with her right now so i mean just saying so take it for what you will but i think that's probably the best that i could possibly update this particular tier list just because i think it's it's really kind of where they sit like as much as i want to say that hildren is an a plus frame you know if you stick pillage on on gyre honestly like this will be i'm i'm taking my words back gyre that's the last change i'm making she is very powerful, okay? She has no survivability whatsoever. You stick Pillage on Gyre, and it's a night and day difference. You stick Pillage and Cathode Grace on her, night and day difference. Because she's building over shields, she's just destroying everything, and that's a good time. So I don't know what to tell you. But I think everything else in here is, is really how it should be, personally. I really do. I just think that this is really the best representation or the best look 
from my personal opinion, as far as either, you know, just OP, literally just overpowered fucking frames, either by not wanting to die or just destroying everything, or just dipping so much fucking damage or squad support, you name it. But that S tier is just, that's what they do. They do it extremely, exceptionally well. The A plus tier is just goddamn good and fucking easy to use. A tier is they're really fucking good, but you either need brain pan, muscle memory, or some definite stat sticking setup and learning the curve on that one. B tier, you stick a subsume on them and they're fucking unbelievable. C tier, specifically niche play style. You know, maybe it's your main, you know, that's fine. You know, but like Nidus doesn't want to die. Nyx doesn't want to die. Evara, pace to shit, but is very good at what she does. Volt, the absolute king of Eidolon killers. Just solo, absolute king of Eidolon killers. Takes longer, but, uh, you know, and then Gara, god tier fucking frame if you're willing to fucking cast abilities constantly instead of you doing anything else. Just saying. <laughs> the C tier are just fun, kind of boring at times, but fun, can be exceptionally powerful, excellent squad sport frame, very survivable frames. But personally, like, and, and like, I have to say, like, Nova could easily be an A-plus A plus frame. Don't get that shit twisted, okay? Nova can be all the way up here. I just personally think that Nova is better down here. Just, my God. I just personally think Nova's better down here. I think she's very fun. She's extremely usable. She's an absolute map controller, but that's where we're at. Just my opinion. Um, you know, Rhino, I'm sorry, Nevident, uh, wow, well, Nevident. Uh, I'm mixing two frames together. Revenant and Neja exist. Um, therefore, Rhino is just just trying to play catch up. You know, Savagoth is exceptionally fucking, he's exceptionally underrated, but is he like OP level frame? No, but he's fun. He's goddamn fun. You know, Vobin, fun. Not personally my my uh, preference for high level because I've tried taking him into a couple thousand range and I've died, so it's fine. But that's me, right? That's me. And then the usable but needs work, talked about that one. And then the in Pablo we trust eventually. Uh, yeah, definitely talked about that because like that's just the thing. So I don't know. That's that's just kind of where I'm at with all that though. So just saying. So tease with a tease, right? Oh man. But you know, I've been running for a couple hours now, so I think I'm just gonna uh, call this square. Anybody watching the replay of this? Hope you have a good time watching it. And uh, as always, we'll catch you folks later. All right.